hot off the press tomorrow on BBC Two, a new weekly magazine with Toya. Hello, dear heart. There are cooking hits. Disco news and things mechanical. Here's a hint for those of you who wear wheels. You have a bit of trouble with the weather, Basically, all you have to do is you wear a bit like that. You see? Fashion news. And career opportunities. If you think a worthwhile career in catering would suit you, and you know which side your bread's buttered on, find out more about this exciting job opportunity. B.A. Robertson drops in each week. There's the good chip guide. And super advice person is on hand. Now, I'm here. Issue one of Dear Heart comes out tomorrow at 6.50 on BBC Two. So watch it. Headache, tiredness, nervous tension. Take Everett. We can make it worse as BBC One brings you the first in a new series. <laughs> Now, Dino D. Horrendous Productions, in association with the BBC. The station that brought you Trawler Fishing Can Be Fun. All you need to know about pins and hang gliding in a chest of drawers presents... Oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Kenny, Kenny something. The Kenny something show. And welcome to the show. Do you remember in the old days when I used to do things like I'd be standing here talking to you and the next second I'd be over here saying something else. And then I'd be up here and then back here in the middle telling you who was on next. Well, we don't do that anymore. We're into new exciting territory where I just stand here and talk about life and the way things are going with the world. For instance, I was looking at a baby the other day and as I held him in my arms, I looked down into, into that little screwed up face and I thought, you're about to embark on life's great adventure, a journey into the unknown. Little do you know what lies ahead of you. You are the man of tomorrow, the latest link in the chain of humanity. You are the hope for all of us. And as I looked into his little blue eyes, I felt a warm feeling right through my jacket and into my shirt. <laughs> and it's only now that I realize that this link isn't working. <laughs> Let's ping me around a few times and get the hell out of here. little flaky pastries. It is me, the lovely Marcel, sex symbol of the EEC. <laughs> or as we say in France, ESA. <laughs> in that case, the, the French letters are so much more exciting. <laughs> the French language in there, it is so flamboyant. For instance, we say chips, and you say French fries. We say cross-channel ferry, and you say sailor. We say cream personnel, and you say yogurt. Vive la différence. You are sitting there saying, where are the jokes? And I say, goodbye. I mean, au revoir. I'm French, you know. You describe the uh, STP as a party for all seasons, a party without a policy and a political non-event. Would you care to clarify that? Uh, certainly. A party which comes into being purely because of the disillusion of members of other parties has no valid platform. Well, I beg to differ. Surely the middle road is something that's been lacking in British politics for far too long. And for a very good reason. When I speak to my constituents, I find that the last thing that they want is a so-called middle road. Well, I'm afraid we'll, uh, we'll just have to leave it there. Uh, we've been talking about the current state of British politics, and you've been looking at a great pair of knockers. <laughs> I don't 
<laughs> What's that you're reading there, Sean? Only Hall, it's Einstein's theory of relativity, if you must know. Oh, I think I saw the film of that. You never heard of Einstein. I have so. He took out my sister. He <laughs> really did. She told me he <laughs> took her to see a carry-on film, and then he took her back to his place, and he said to her, would you like me to explain my theory of relativity? And she said, I never go that far on a first date. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, the premise is this. This country of ours is not self-sufficient. We simply do not grow enough food to eat without importing from what any fair-minded observer would call neo-fascist foreigners. <laughs> so what we intend to do is this. The only people allowed to eat will be A, members of the Parliamentary Labour Party, and B, no one else. <laughs> By the way, when I say members of the Parliamentary Labour Party, I mean, of course, those who observe and accept totally the manifesto upon which this party was elected. This will lead to such a surplus that we'll be able to export it all and we'll be quids in. <laughs> it's a gash, isn't it? <laughs> oh, master, master, I have such the world over for you. You, the wisest of the wise, I beg you to enlighten me. I have many riches. I am successful in my life. But I'll give everything to be your pupil. You have a sign here, my son. And I will dispose of all your riches for you. Oh, gladly, Master, gladly have it all. Am I now your pupil? Indeed you are. And what is it that you wish to know? I know many things, Master, but I do not know who I am. My question is, who am I? Who am I? That's you there. <laughs> It's Nana Muscuri. <laughs> this show is so zappy. We hope it makes you happy. It's zany and it's wacky. Now here's another bit. Psst, come over here. There's something I want to show you. It's just here. It's a new... <laughs> BBC. Bleeding bolshy cameras. Give me a sensible camera. Do. I want to show you something. It's the latest thing from America Land. Have you guessed what it is? You're not going to believe it. This is for sticking under your loo seat. <laughs> so that you, when you lift the loo seat, you don't have to touch the loo seat. <laughs> and wait a minute. Once somebody's picked up the loo seat by using this handy device, the next person has to use the same handy device. Got you there, America. Wait a minute, what am I saying? They've probably got an attachment for the attachment. <laughs> so that everybody who comes into the loo fits their own personal attachment to the attachments that are already attached to the loo seat, but no one will ever touch again. <laughs> God bless America! <laughs> and now, Abraham Lincoln. What really happened? What? <laughs> and now, a... No, Joe, even though you are my cousin, I don't think we can do that. But we did it before. This is the worst play I've ever seen. Isn't it over yet? No, dear. It's only halfway through the first act. Oh, my God. <laughs> What are you doing after the flogging, Alice? Oh, I think I've got a fingernail put in himself, boy. Oh, that's all right. It won't take long. There's only ten of them, eh? No, I don't do the thumbs, do they? Oh, why not? Well, that's for the thumb screwing, isn't it? Reg does that. Did you say Reg? Yeah. Oh, best thumb screw in the business. He did mine, you know. Give him my regards. Oh. Just say... So from Lionel. You'll know. <laughs> Where are you up to? Well, I think we're over by now. Where are we up to, love? Oh, I don't know. I haven't been counting. Oh, you bleeding silly cow. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. One. <laughs> two. <laughs> Just can't get the staff these days. <laughs> Three. Hello. 
Oh, I guess I'll puke. Uh, don't you wish you were? Here's the joke. Little boy, snotty little tail rag, right? Squashes a butterfly. Splatto! His dad says, you snotty little tail rag. Just for that, you'll have no butter for a month. Next day, he squashes a honeybee. His dad says, you snotty little tail rag. Just for that, no honey for a month. Then his mother walks in, steps on a cockroach. Kid looks at his father and says, Will you tell her or shall I? <laughs> I can't believe I heard it. It sounded so polite. On second thoughts, I'm not so sure. I think I'll stay for more. <laughs> yes, Michael, that's right. I've had a lot of things in my pipeline in my time. And there's some very exciting things coming up in front of me these days. I just don't know which one to grab first. I'm very excited about my latest film, The Abattoir Massacre. Have you seen it? Oh, you love it! There's this scene where I go down to the river, and I'm standing there admiring the view, and suddenly there's this alligator, and I'm so terrified that all my clothes fall off! And suddenly, these three lumberjacks with big axes, you say chop us here? <laughs> well, anyway, they come running out of the forest, which is on fire, and the heat is so intense, they take all their clothes off. Suddenly, the dam bursts, and the whole population of the town goes floating by naked. All their heads are missing as well, because there's been these axe murders. Oh, but I mustn't tell you the plot. <laughs> anyway, that's the opening, and it's all done, of course, in the best possible taste. <laughs> It's celebrity guest time. And with us on the show tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have one of the great Rolling Stones. In fact, in my opinion, the Rolling Stone. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bill Wyman! Hi, Bill. It's really great to have you on the show. Thank you, Ken. It's nice to be here. I knew he'd say that. What a man! Oh, you know, when they said, let's have a rolling stone on the show, there was no doubt in my mind, because for me, there is only one rolling stone, and that's Bill Wyman. Well, thanks, Ken, but, uh, you know, there are five of us in the band, and we all play our part. I would have said if anybody stood out, it would be Mick. Who? He's so <laughs> humble, folks. Anyway, Bill, something I've always wanted to know about you personally, when you do your shows, you're always prancing around and leaping up and down. It must be pretty tiring. Do you have to train or, 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 or do you go out jogging before the show or what? Well, no, I just sort of stand there and play bass. You play bass as well? <laughs> Notice that through the charisma. <laughs> Bill, would you mind if the camera came in close and gave everybody at home a good look at those famous lips? <laughs> I don't see the point, Ken. You don't see the point? How humble can you get? <laughs> Wait a minute, Kenny. You seem to think I'm Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger? He's the bass player. <laughs> well, thank you, Bill. Thanks for coming on the show. And when I told all the girls on the show that we had a lead singer of the Rolling Stones coming on, they were all drooling and palpitating. Palpitating? Yes, and they wanted to ravish your bodily particles. Oh, really? Oh, well, uh, I'll see you, Ken. I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> this, this must be the one. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> Do you mind? I'm terribly sorry. I'm... What can it be? There's another one. That was it. Yes, this is the one. Oh, great. As you know, just a few moments ago, I was speaking to the multi-talented Bill Wyman, lead singer and bass player with the fantastic Rolling Stones. What I'm sure you don't know is that Bill is also one of the world's greatest female impersonators. How long have you been doing this, Bill? Doing what, Kenny? Well, this great act. Well, I do it on tours just to make the lads laugh. Amazing. And what are you going to sing for us, Bill? Well, a song from my new album. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Wyman.
Is that one of the crosswords? Oh, I like them. Let's see. Five down. Sinister visitor in the night bearing gifts. Mugger. That's it. M U G G E R. Ah, right. No, no, there's an S in the middle of this. Take it out then. <laughs> Mugger. Put it in. Thank you very much. Uh, Mugger. I never thought of that. Uh, That's it. You stick it in there. Mm. Right. <laughs> Ever met a mugger? No, no, I've been lucky. Who do you mean you've been lucky? What have you got against us muggers, pal? I never said you were a mugger. I didn't imply that at all. Uh... No, don't get me wrong. The implication was all mine. <laughs> Quite frightening, these carriages, aren't they? You could get killed in here. Nobody would know. Nobody to help you. Can you imagine being stuck completely alone in an empty carriage with a mugger? <laughs> I can see a bit of wee magic suit that you work in the city, eh? Yes. No, we are not in the city now. You're in trouble, that's what you are. <laughs> Pen pusher, eh? Yes sir, no sir. Three bags full, sir. Yes. Bet you don't get much violence! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no violence. <laughs> Something wrong with your voice, pal? <laughs> oh, hey, hey, we're coming to your station. Oh. That's the good news. The bad news is you're not getting it. <laughs> oh, 
here are some of my chums. Pal, some friends from the city with their very sharp pens. <laughs> Quite intimidating, isn't it? These late night trains. A man could drown in ink. That's <laughs> so good, isn't it? Good You look very frightened, aren't you? I can see it written all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> the disguise that almost changed the course of history. It's the only way, Joseph. We have this actor. He looks just like the Führer. He will appear at the rally in Nuremberg in front of thousands of our people. No one will ever know. This could win the war. Brilliant, Hermann! I'm not so sure. Come in! Do you think these boots are too much? <laughs> well, I didn't think they were that bad. <laughs> Spider-Man, what is it? Your flies are undone. <laughs> Thanks, Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, Kenny Guru, wisest of the marsupials, tell me, what is Tuesday's blinding thought? Life is an orange. Is it? Isn't it? <laughs> someone else. <laughs> Hello, my little video buffs. It is me, the enchanting Marcel. The experience of a lifetime on legs. How are you? How are you in the mood? Good. I'll be there in 20 minutes. I just have this little joquette to do. What is it that a man does standing up, a woman sitting down, and a dog on three legs? <laughs> you get it? A man standing up, a woman sitting down, and a dog on three legs. It's shaking hands. <laughs> what else could it be? I'm coming round. Pop your coat. <laughs> you to my humble chamber. What news of the prisoner? Has he confessed yet? Not yet, Your Majesty. Not yet? What no. do you mean, not yet? What have you tried on him? Well, I stretched him on the rack. Yes. And I pulled out his fingernails. Good. And then I broke his arms and legs. Uh -huh. And then I disemboweled him a bit. Nice one. Cut off his ears, nose and throat. Inventive. And then I burnt him at the stake. And still no confession. I'm afraid not, Your Majesty. Where is he now? Right here in this bag. <laughs> Knock it off with the waving bizzlers. One is merely clearing the smoke. <laughs> What's that you've got there, darling? A UB40. Isn't that a pop group? No, no, no. It's an unemployment benefit. We'll be signing on tomorrow. <laughs> it's come to this, has it? The Labour Exchange. And me, a queen. It's all right. There'll be lots of actors there. We'll feel quite at home. <laughs> now, let me see. Name. Elizabeth Regina. No, 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 no. That's all that's, uh, under also known as. Oh. Huh? Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor. I remember, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and now, occupation? Monarch. No. No, no, no. no. Is it? What was it? Uh, uh, I don't know. Good at waving. You can't put that down as an occupation, Philip. Well, what else do you do, dear? <laughs> I suppose I am rather good at waving. Yeah, yeah. Now, did you leave your former employment voluntarily, or were you dismissed, or were you made redundant? 
Hmm? I was humiliated by your son, and you know it. He's your son, too. Oh, brilliant. We spotted that, did we? Now, don't you get upset with me. Well, it's just not good enough. He made his opening speech in Parliament and never mentioned my name once. And her. You'd think she'd show some gratitude. Who was it who took her out of that nursery school and made her what she is today? Us! Speak of the devil. Here they come now, down the mall. Whoa! And in my favorite coach. I can't bear it any longer. No, oh, no, 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 dearest. Oh, no, you yes, mustn't. Yes, yes. No, no, no. Just watch me, Buster. <laughs> oh. yeah, I've never seen tomato on taffeta before. Well, it might catch on. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> Good shot, aren't you? Darling, I love you. I love you, too. You love me, too? No, I love you, too. Good evening. Is there someone else? What is it? <laughs> Initially, the premise is this. People are saying that the Labour Party is rent by internal divisions and is no longer a credible political force. This is an irresponsible rumour started by what can only be described as extreme right-wing fascists. And furthermore, it's true. <laughs> so what we intend to do is this. We're going to repair the differences of opinion between Michael Foote and myself by effecting a compromise. The party will follow all my policies to the letter, but, and here's the compromise, we'll all wear donkey jackets and walk with a stick. <laughs> it's a belt, isn't it? Close your mouth, Michael. <laughs> I'm finally fulfilling my biggest ambition. Mm-hmm. I'm making a space movie. It's called 2001 2. <laughs> it's a sequel. <laughs> 2,000 men and me in outer space. Get it? Believe me, I did. <laughs> I think it's a brilliant title. Anyway, enough of mathematics. Can you imagine, Michael? Can you just imagine 2,000 men and me? I mean, think of my position. We had to keep doing it again and again until we got it right. I mean, movie making, it can be hell, you know. There's this scene where we're in the spaceship and we're weightless and we can't get it together and we're looking at Uranus. <laughs> That's right, the planet. <laughs> Any road devil, we all go down and we land only to discover these little people who inhabit Uranus. There's a whole pile of them lying there groaning. They haven't seen a woman for four million years. And they've got two of everything. And they all look at me and say, hold it right there in Uranian. And suddenly there's a clap of thunder, my spacesuit falls off and I'm weightless. And I'm starting to float away. And it takes 10 men to hold me down. Believe me, Michael, that's when you really find out who your real friends are. But I'm telling you the plot. Anyway, it's all done in the best possible day. Well, that's the end of the show, and it's always a sad moment, this, because we've come to know and love you during this past half hour. While we've been doing our silly little jokes and sketches, you've been sitting there gasping, this is the greatest show I've seen in my life. But what does it mean in real terms? Now you're off to make the tea, and as for me, well, I'll be taking off my makeup, packing my little bag, fighting my way through thousands of screaming fans at the stage door, and all the time, I'll be thinking of you. Please try to watch again next week, same time, same station, because you, the audience, are what it's all about. It's you who make the whole thing worthwhile. You are the reason for it all, and we love you. Good night, and God bless. <laughs> little creep.
theme music for this programme by the group Fox is available on a new BBC single called Electro People.